Welcome back. Experiment number nine, the oxidation of 2-octanol. Fairly straightforward reaction. It's an oxidation, obviously. So we're going to be using bleach to oxidize the alcohol to a ketone. Oxidation, increase the number of oxygen atoms in the molecule or reduce the number of hydrogen atoms. Very straightforward. Can't forget that one. So we have our 500 ml flask. We need a condenser and we will need a thermometer. We need to monitor the temperature of the solution. So we're gonna put the thermometer down a fair bit and it's gonna pop in there. Now, we're gonna need the octanol and the glacial acetic acid and a set funnel with some bleach in it. So I'll go get those. Okay, I've added the alcohol, the octanol and the glacial acetic acid. And it, in the fume hood, I've dispensed about 60 milliliters of bleach, sodium hypochlorite. Now, interesting thing about this reaction, it works well when it's warm, but too hot and bad things happen. So we use a warm water bath. Warm tap water will get us the temperature we need for the reaction to occur. If it gets too hot, the warm water actually then acts as a cooling to keep bring the temperature back down to the warm temperature we would like. So I've got the bleach in there. I can start adding. We add a little bit at first, and then we shut it down to a dropwise rate, something like that, and you'll see the yellow color. We don't want to add too fast. We want that yellow color to dissipate, and we want to stir, stir really well, because we're kind of mixing oil and water here. So we want a bit of a vinaigrette. We need our cooling water in the bottom, out the top, and our thermometer just touching the liquid down there and our bath in place. Everything looks just peachy. We'll have to add this, the uh, bleach in two portions because the sump funnel is not big enough to hold the amount we need. So we're doing it in two shots. Right on. Everything looks good. Fast stirring. So, we're keeping the temperature at about 45 to 50 degrees. The warm water bath is helping maintain that. Stirring vigorously, make sure we got a good mix on this, and adding at a dropwise rate. Looking good. The color is quite nice. The yellow color is disappearing as fast as it's generated. Excellent. Okay, our addition is done. We've stirred it now. So I've taken everything apart and rinsed it with cold water. But there may still be unreacted bleach, and there may be a, a fair amount of bleach. So we have potassium iodide starch paper. So if there's any bleach left over, it will cause something to happen. And actually, this is what the glass rod's for. Dip your glass rod, put a drop on the paper, and uh-oh. We've got unreacted oxidant, so we're going to neutralize that with thiol sulfate. You will find the sodium thiol sulfate ready and waiting for you. Add a couple of mils and then test again. Okay, I had to add three or four milliliters, but I think I got it now, and you can see no reaction on the potassium iodide starch paper. So the, the bleach, the sodium hypochlorite, has been neutralized, which is a good thing because it's kind of caustic and nasty. So we got it out of the way. And the color, it's colorless. That's the other sign. If you have any yellow, that means you need more thiol sulfate. Okay, the next step of our reaction is we want to adjust the pH. Remember we added acetic acid at the beginning? So, and then the sodium hypochlorite. So we ended up with an acetic acid buffer. So that's going to be a pKa about five and a half. So the pH of that solution is acidic. We want it to be a little bit basic. So we're going to add three molar sodium hydroxide and using the pH paper, little tiny piece again, with our glass rod, touch on the pH paper, we'll adjust the pH to basic, about pH 9. Then, very straightforward, 
This goes in the sup funnel, drain off the aqueous layer, keep the oil that's on top, add your diethyl ether, swirl, get the, all the oil out of here, put it in with the uh, product layer in the sup funnel, as instructed in the lab manual, and then we go off and do a rotovap and get our yield, and we find out how much octanone we made from octanol. See you in the lab. Have fun.